come to my house, you ask me to murder for money. I'm the godfather. I don't murder for money. Uh, see, Kai Hubbard, I have an offer for you. Uh, your name is here. Your name is there. Your stats, your age, your value, your strengths, your weaknesses. I will make you an offer you cannot refuse. I will put your picture there and I'll draw a beautiful picture for you. But you have to sign for Bayern, all right? You have to sign for Bayern. But hello, everyone. Welcome to Bayern Now, the ultimate Bayern Me fan channel. So another another development in the Kai Havertz transfer story. So according to Telefootball, Chelsea seem determined to land Kai Havertz. And Bayern Munich are in there and they're setting up a deal for Kai Havertz this summer. And I think this is a very neutral story and I think I'm gonna speak from a neutral perspective but by the way a lot of these Chelsea fans that come on these videos I just don't understand some of you are like well why would he want to be in the farmers league? farmers league farmers league you're so stupid because if you're gonna say it's a farmers league then everything Havertz and Werner do have to be delegitimized because they're doing it in the farmers league it sounds very stupid and ignorant when you say something like that your Eden Hazard came from what Lille some irrelevant team in France so look Stop saying Farmers League. Find me a real reason Spurs are losing. Yes, expressions is going to be mad. But find me a real reason why Kai Havertz may potentially not join Bayern. And maybe we'll have a civil discussion. I don't care if you think I'm stupid. I don't care if you hate me. You don't hate me. You hate what I have to say. <laughs> That's the difference. You don't know me. What if I'm a good person off the camera? What if I'm actually a very cool guy? You don't know that. Maybe I'm not. What if I am though? Like, you don't know me, so you can't hate someone you don't know. But on the Kai Havertz thing, like I said, more and more twists keep coming out. And I actually really, really like when these happen. I think there's a new saga starting with Bayern fans. It's Kai Havertz now. And I think a lot of Bayern fans, actually, maybe like, let's say, 10% of the active Bayern fan base on Twitter will tell you, oh, we don't need Kai Havertz. We have Thomas Muller. And I actually think, yes, I agree with you. We do have Thomas Muller. But there's something called statement signings and this is it this is one of the statement signings we were lucky enough to always have had thomas muller we've had bastian schweinsteiger we've had philip lam players that have come from our academy but sometimes when you have a player like kai havertz i'm gonna change the picture i can't stand looking at sunny man <laughs> kai you can come back <laughs> you, you can come back kai <laughs> but when you have players that certain clubs want it's a statement signing hazard to real madrid it's a statement signing Cristiano Ronaldo, Real Madrid, it's a statement signing. Not to Juventus, but to Real Madrid in 2009, statement signing. And that's what I mean. When these players go for a certain amount of money and also are demanded by other clubs, it's a statement signing. And I think Bayern need to make him a statement signing. Sané's already a statement signing. Anyone that thinks Leroy Sané isn't a statement signing, they need to hear this statement. He is. He's one of the best wingers in the world on his day. He is superb at everything, and it is a statement signing. But with Kai Havertz, it's a different type of statement signing. Actually, look at this. Put yourself into the perspective of a defender. Say Bayern are playing the Champions League quarterfinals, and your name is Inter Milan. You're a defender. You're Skriniar. You're any Inter Milan defender. And on the team sheet, you're just looking. Or in the tunnel, you look to one side. You're the Allianz Arena, the Bayern Arena, the, the stadium. You're there. You look to your right, and uh, that's the right. All you see, you see Kai Havertz. <laughs> you see Leroy Sane, Serge Gnabry, and then Lewandowski is walking down the steps, and he's just casually having a conversation with one of your teammates because they're friends. Maybe Perisic is there, and he's like, Sane, what's up, man? Ah, yeah, 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 I love you, man. Mm -mm. Maybe Leroy Sane is there. Serge Gnabry is like, What's up, fam? Yeah, because he's British and also sounds very German. <laughs> well, actually, he's German and sounds very British. Opposite. And then Muller's like, oh, what a, what a screeny, screeny. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's up, man? <laughs> like, you, you know what I'm talking about? You just see that lineup. You just see these ballers coming out of the tunnel together. My lights are flickering because of that. This is what I mean. When ballers are ballers and they say a statement to defenders. And I think that's it. That's what Kai Havertz is. People are going to be scared to play Bayern because of just Kai Havertz. Sometimes a lot of people are like, you know what, we can just play our youngsters. We can just play our youngsters. I mean, do people are people really this stupid? Do you really think we could just play our youth academy and we'd win games? 
No, <laughs> we get slapped up week in week out with our youth academy. Sometimes it's not about playing youngsters. It's not about their ability. There's youngsters that are probably on the same level of technical ability as Kai Havertz. Jamal Musiala in the next few years, British guy will be a baller soon. Don't worry, you'll see him balling for us. In, he's 17 right now, but you'll see him balling. You think defenders are looking at Musiala and they're like, oh yeah, I'm scared. No, they're not. But when they see Kai Havertz, it's a different level of fear. And that's what we want. We want the fear factor. That's what a statement signing is. You don't think teams and defenders are looking at Leroy Sané and looking at Bayern's attack and they're like, yeah, I got to be careful with them. I got to be careful. I got to drop back. When teams just drop back and allow space, that's what happens a lot of the times in Bayern matches. People think teams play high lines against us. No, the first 30 minutes, they play very deep. They play decent. They play decent. And then they think, oh, we haven't conceded for 30 minutes. That's why a lot of Bayern first halves are very poor. So we're just trying to move the ball and try and break them down. We don't. And then they get confident. That's what happens with most, most, with most teams. And then they're like, you know what? Let's try and attack ourselves. We hit him on the break, one counter-attack, one, or one nil up, Robert Lewandowski scoring a fantastic goal. And then the rest of the game, they're chasing the game, which means now Bayern get this energy. We move the ball 10 times faster because we felt the opposition out more. And that's what happened with Chelsea. Chelsea were like, first half, let's just relax, don't press them as high. And guess what? Second half, Bayern were like, let's change gears. Let's change to see if they can keep up. That's what Bayern are very good at. Your Pancakes was the first manager, I'd say, that did this with Bayern. Because before, I'd say Bayern teams were more composed. They had different... In terms of switching gears, you can go from possession to defending very quickly with Bayern. From defending to attacking. Bayern, move the bang. You know, you, you move certain... Bang, bang. And then we, we're past you. And that's what I mean. When you have ballers like Kai Havertz, you have this ability to do that. Teams won't sit off Jamal Muziela. They won't do that. They'll just be like, hey, this guy's a non-baller. Let's just not even care about him. Let's just, you know, stick tight to him and worry him. And he'll probably fall to the worry. And I actually think people, you have to relax. You know, uh, maybe Havertz goes to Chelsea. If he goes to Chelsea, it would, I would, it would have me question the ambition of our board for one second. Because Kai Havertz will go to the... The Champions League is the most important club competition. I don't care what anyone says. If you win the Champions League, you attract everyone. Players that would never have considered playing for your club, or you would have never considered. We would have never considered some players. What if Kylian Mbappe is like, hey, Bayern's not that bad. They've got all these French talents. Maybe I want to join them and win me a Champions League. What if he's actually thinking that? And he's hearing Alaba and all these players. He's looking at Alfonso Davies. He's looking at Lewandowski when a Ballon d'Or. That's what happens. That's what happened in 2010 to 2020 with Real Madrid. Real Madrid won the Champions League in 2014. The first time in that decade. And all of a sudden, players were like, yeah, yeah, this is the team. Kroos was open to go there. That was the team. And they all freaking flocked over there. The talent went to Real Madrid. And that's it. That's what happened. Bayern... 2013, 2012, 2010. We should maybe have had three Champions Leagues, but that's debatable. And then I think that's where players join you freely. And looking at 2020, if Bayern Munich win the Champions League, it boosts our chances of signing anyone we want. We won't have to ask players to join us. We won't have to take them to the training ground and take them and show them around our facilities. We won't have to take them to the stadium. They will have to come visit our stadium for themselves. That's the key. That, that, will, that will happen if we win the Champions League, of course. And I think we have to be patient. Just wait. We didn't think we'd sign Leroy Sani this quickly, and we have. Well, not quickly. It's been a year, but this effectively. Bayern are always going to be the lion. Except a few days ago, we decided to wake up and go eat and go hunt. And we hunted, got Sani, and now he's in Munich. That's that quickly um that quick that's what i like about Bayern. um man's ass thank you so much for subscribing while i'm making the video <laughs> oh geez that's very nice i love seeing that but thank you so much everyone that's supporting and subscribing to the channel that's what i mean though when you have ballers like kai hubbards like leroy sani it scares people it makes them feel a certain way and chelsea fans can feel like oh yeah this is it we're determined to sign him 
we're gonna get him. Um, wait till the German propaganda begins <laughs> with Lothar Matthäus, Franz Beckenbauer, on, on all these German legends and all these Bayern legends. Wait till Sami Kufo sings him an African, oh, my brother, join us. <laughs> wait till that happens because you're not seeing the full-on Bayern propaganda. With, with Sami, Sami did join us because, you know, the German media, was, or not German media, the Bayern legends were doing it. No, he joined us because... He wanted to join us, and also uh, he has friends, uh, Kimmich and Goretzka and Gnabry in that team. So, I don't know, with Kai Havertz, I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens with him because we always see him in that Kimmich, you know, Goretzka, Gnabry circle with Sané in the national team. So I wonder if he's going to choose that, or he could be one, that anomaly. I mean, people think of Tony Cruz and they're like, oh, he left Bayern. No, Bayern sold him because we didn't want to give him the money he deserved. And we didn't want to keep him and be ambitious to keep him. And guess what? We lost one of the best midfielders of this decade. And if we'd kept Cruz, who knows how many things we would have done with him and how many accomplishments the club and Tony Cruz would have had. Yeah, looking at Havertz, he takes that path. Or if Bayern willingly allow Havertz to take that path, I'm not going to go with the board and say, oh, you suck. You're so bad. No. I'm actually gonna try and ratify or justify it. And I think that's the most important thing. I think we should wait, we should all wait and see what happens, how the transfers unravel and how things end up being, especially after the DFB Pokal final. If Bayern are submitting or putting up an interest, that's what I like. Bayern usually don't get linked to a player seriously and don't sign him, that never happens. You know, Goretzka was actually supposed to be a Liverpool slash Manchester United player. Yeah, and then he ended up signing for Bayern because that's what happens. It's a German's dream to play for Bayern. I think people, I don't know if it's just British people or people from other countries. And look at Italy. You, know, you don't see Italians like, ah, it's my dream to play. They never leave Italy. And it's the same thing with German players. Sané is going back to Germany. He's going back to his homeland. It's almost like you always want to be in your home country. The difference is with Havertz is you wonder if that's what he wants or that he just wants play time, he wants games. He wants attention. I don't think Havertz wants attention. He looks like a very down-to-earth kind of kid. He looks like he doesn't really care about I'm saying kid. He's like three, four years old. Than me. I'm freaking 17 years old. <laughs> He's my freaking elder. But thank you everyone so much for watching this video. Another twist in the saga. But let's let's wait. Let's wait and see how it unfolds. Especially after the DFP Pokal final. I will start making graphics for it. I'll go get a haircut tomorrow. I'll be looking saucy, and then on the 4th of July, oh geez, uh, I mean, I don't care about Sirona, I'm gonna go celebrate my country. So thank you everyone so much for watching this. Mia San Mia.